What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. Unfortunately, the title of today's video is not clickbait. There's three problems with the Legacy GT that I am quite worried about, two of which I'm fairly confident that I can fix this week, depending on if we have to wait for parts. One of them could mean this car could be down for a very long time. So if you've been keeping up with the Legacy build series, you probably remember that I talked about there being some sort of rubbing noise coming from the front end. So I think I may have figured out what this is. Now, after I got the car aligned in the last video, I took it out to drive it, just see how the alignment felt uh, and see how far off the steering wheel is. So problem number one, the steering wheel is still not straight. So unfortunately, when he was trying to get that straight for me, there is simply not enough room up in here between where the steering rack is and the steering shaft to actually get this thing off and straighten the steering wheel out. So that means we're gonna have to drop the rack down just slightly, which isn't the end of the world. It's just a little bit of stuff to unbolt. So that's problem number one, very fixable. Now, while I was out driving the car, I got a check engine light. And just prior to the check engine light, I was noticing a lot of smoke from the rear end. So I'm a little concerned about that. Now, oddly enough, the check engine light is not for something engine related. It's for a speed sensor. And so I'm thinking what we've got going on is that rubbing noise up front is probably something to do with the speed sensor in one of these two front wheels. So I need to dive into that. I got a code reader from my friend Josh that we're gonna be using to get a more in-depth look at this because the code that it throws is just a general, I think it's a P005 code and you have to go further in to see what that code means and what is actually acting up within the system. So it's either one of these speed sensors or the ABS module that's up in the engine bay. That stuff I'm confident that I can fix. Now if the check engine light goes away, I'm hoping the car will run better. And I don't know why it's running this way because a speed sensor is not necessarily related to any smoke and that's why I am concerned. Now this car doesn't have an air oil separator on it. It desperately needs one. I have one literally sitting in that cabinet in there. So I'm gonna install that before I assume the worst and think that the engine might be on its way out or have already failed. But we've got some work to do. So I think I'm gonna tackle this from easiest to hardest. And I say easiest in the sense that I know I can accomplish it today. So I'm gonna start with the steering rack and get the steering wheel straightened out, get that checked off the list. Then we're gonna run the diagnostics code and try to figure out what specifically is wrong within our speed sensor system, get that issue fixed, see if the speed sensor is actually damaged within there. And if we need to replace that, I'll order a new part. Then we'll be able to get a better idea of what's going on with the car because I can actually drive it at that point, see if the smoke issue has gone away, or if we want to install the air oil separator and see if it's just a blow-by issue that we're getting smoke from. I'm really, really hoping it's not the worst case scenario here, but it is a car with 145,000 miles on the stock motor, and I've been pushing 300 horsepower to the wheels through it for the last few years. So it very well could be its time, but let's go ahead and dive in today. Okay, so if you look up here, you can see I've got the U-joint disconnected from the shearing from the steering shaft. So I'm gonna go up there and get the steering wheel turned to the correct orientation and then we'll have to get this connected again. To do so, I had to drop the entire rack down enough to get this thing off. So here's how the wheel was positioned. Obviously we have to do what we're doing by pulling the U-joint off to fix this because it was quite crooked. So now we're gonna rotate it back this way and I may need to grab, yeah, I'm gonna need to grab Lewis to hold the steering wheel in place while I get it connected down below because it just wants to rotate back. confident that we got the wheel straight while the rack is centered so the wheels look down here and the wheel up here looks like this so we can officially move on to the next task there's a few things we need to button up down below with just that brace that goes over the power steering rack but I'm gonna hold off on that because we need to scan the car and I'm hoping to learn a little bit more about the speed sensor and realistically I'm hoping it says it's one of the ones in the front end and that that's the noise that's rubbing and we can get that resolved once and for all. And then we can figure out the smoking engine issue and see what we've got going on with that. So this is what I'm getting here. It's telling me there is a speed sensor, a, a circuit issue. It says there's open or a short in the vehicle sensor circuit, or I have a faulty vehicle speed sensor, potentially wrong size tire and wheels on the vehicle, which we've obviously changed the tire and wheels. 
but they're very close to the ratio of the stock wheels or a potentially faulty engine control module. So I really don't know where to go from here. I think I'm gonna put the car back up in the air and pull the front sensors out and see if I see any signs of damage that they've been rubbing against the hub or anything like that and go from there. Okay guys, I found the culprit. And I'm not even sure it was, actually I'm 100% sure it was my fault. So if you can see here, that speed sensor needs to go down like that. And there is no bolt in that hole. So because I found a second bolt that matched the one on the other side in my spare bolts pile, I'm almost certain that I just left that out of the speed sensor. So I make mistakes too guys. So it's all about learning. I'm gonna pull this guy out and see if there's any damage on it. Which it doesn't appear there is, but it's pretty dirty. I'm gonna see if there's a good way to clean that that's safe without damaging it. Okay, so everything I've read says you don't wanna use a chemical on it unless necessary. And even then you wanna use like a soapy water. So I've just got a nice soft microfiber utility towel from Griot's that I'm gonna wipe these down with and then get it reinstalled. And then we'll take it for a test drive and see if that resolves the noise I was hearing up front and if we are still smoking like crazy from the rear exhaust. Okay, so speed sensors are back in and tightened down. I'm hoping that was an easy fix. I'm gonna bring the car, actually, I need to get the brace back on the power steering here. We're gonna put that back on so that's fixed. And then we'll bring the car back down, start it up and see where we're at. Hopefully that resolved the rubbing noise that I was hearing up front and I would imagine it would clear the code because that's clearly an issue when your speed sensor isn't in the location it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna throw this back on and we're gonna get this thing on the road. All right, I've got the car back on the ground. Now time to figure out how to clear these codes or I should say code, there's only one. Probably help if I had the car in the on position. Okay, so now it says no fault codes detected, so that seemed to have fixed the speed sensor issue. I'm gonna go ahead and start the car up because I wanna see if we got this straight, which it looks like we did. Make sure the code is cleared and see how bad this thing is still smoking. Okay, let's see if the car starts and if we're in the clear. Okay, it's running. Here's the check engine light is off. We still have an ABS light, which is interesting. Maybe we just need to clear that, I'm not sure. Let's see if it's smoking. Just a little bit right now. It was very noticeable when I was under load driving the car. So I'll let it warm up. I gotta move the WRX so I can pull it out but we'll go take this thing around the block and see what's up. So it's got a little bit of smoke now that it's warmed up. Probably more than we'd like to see. It is a little colder tonight, so I'm sure there's a little bit of condensation, but definitely a little concerning. I'm gonna take it out. Um, when I was driving it before, it was super visible. Like I could see smoke billowing kind of out. Not, not like it was on fire or anything, but like it was very visible through the back window as I was driving it. So I'm gonna take this thing around the block again real quick, see if we have a similar experience. Uh, and if it does, I'm hoping it's just blow by. Um, I'm honestly not familiar enough with engines to know if that would be causing this issue solely. Um, but like I said, I do have an IAG air oil separator that I'm probably gonna install here in the next video now uh, to see if that resolves this issue. But if you have any input, let me know down in the comment section. I'm always trying to learn and I'm sure some of you guys know more about the stuff than I do. Okay, so I'm just pulling out of the driveway. The ABS light has turned off, which is great. Let's see. And that noise I was hearing appears to be gone, which is fantastic. Oh my God, if we resolve that, I'm gonna be so happy. I'm not seeing a lot of smoke coming out of the back of the car. You guys, I think we might be back. If this car is actually ready to drive, I'm gonna absolutely ship rigs. Okay guys, the wheel is definitely straight. 
there's still a little bit of noise but i'm honestly wondering if it's just the new polyurethane bushings and i've got a little more driveline noise than i'm used to and that's all i'm hearing because i couldn't see anything under the car the car doesn't feel weird like anything's dragging or rubbing it may just be a little additional driveline noise from those stiffer bushings we are so freaking back you guys oh my god i'm freaking out second gear pull here Woo! let's go I am so freaking happy right now We are so back, you guys. This thing absolutely fucks. I compared to driving the 2.5i, this 300 horsepower is feeling ridiculous after, after daily driving that thing, which I know 300 horsepower is not a lot of horsepower, but holy shit, am I happy to have this car back. Let's go. All right, I'm feeling bold. So I think what we should do is take this car to work tomorrow, assuming the weather's nice. As long as the weather's nice, we'll take this on a maiden voyage shakedown. And fingers crossed we have no issues because I don't want to be late to work. But if we do, I'll have video documentation. Um, yeah, I just got to see how this car feels. I want to shake it down, drive it, and uh, see where we're at. It's the next morning and I am equally excited as I am terrified because we're gonna drive this car 25 miles to work. This is the furthest it's been driven in 14 months. It's the first big drive since the whole build. Let's go shake this thing down. I cannot believe this car is out of the garage, out of my neighborhood. This is huge. Oh, it looks so good. We don't have the spats on it or anything yet. This is just very preliminary shakedown. God, that's annoying. We are so back, boys. This thing feels excellent. Still got that slight rubbing noise up front. I'm starting to think it may just be the tire hitting the fender liner, so I need to look into that a little bit. Wheel needs to be straightened out just slightly, but the car drives completely straight, which I would expect after uh, a fresh alignment. But oh my God, let me drop down and give you a fourth gear pull here. Woo! Well, the Legacy officially made it to Tacoma with no issues other than a dead battery at the gas station, which was totally my fault. I had Lewis come and jump me. But this is a huge moment, you guys. If you've been watching this build the whole time, this is, this is the end result. I am so excited, so proud, just feeling accomplished, honestly. This has been the biggest build that I've ever personally tackled, with the exception of the S14, but that's not done yet, so I, I won't count that. But this is huge, you guys. I'm so happy to be driving this car again. It makes me feel like I'm 18 and just experiencing this car for the first time all over again. And that is a priceless feeling. All right, got the car back from work today. Drove great other than that noise, but I found the culprit. Unfortunately, one of these guides back here in the Brembo, I lose the light, but up on the left-hand side there, that bolt holding that brake pad slide in there, backed out and was dragging on the rotor and left a little bit of a scar back here. Let's see if you can see it. So a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. And after I did this, I also was thinking it would have been way cooler to do two piece rotors for the full send build. So we may do those eventually. But in the meantime, I'm going to get this Titan back down, get this all reassembled. And then the car is actually 100% good to drive, which is so freaking sick.